Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the place And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains Take a second and greet those around you. Wish everyone a Merry Christmas. So if y'all will, we have these black registration pads on the inside of the pews, and y'all can be seated, yes. <laughs> uh, but if you will, go ahead and open those up, sign your name, uh, and then pass them down the aisles. Thank y'all so much for that. And uh, the church will be closed this Monday and this Tuesday for the holiday, so if you try to contact the church office, they will not answer. Um, <laughs> uh, Okay, so now we're going to sing O Come All Ye Faithful, which is on page 174. Yeah, Do you want sure. to understand? Let's <laughs> all sing it. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold it, born the King of Hades. Let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord, true God of true God, light of light eternal. No, He shines not the bird. 
So whenever I think about Christmas, one of the things I think about is just what an awesome opportunity it is for us to remember just how Jesus was sent for us and to us really to take a step back from our lives and we get a break from work and we get to really like be with family and spend time and enjoy just the season. Um, but we also get to take time and just process and realize that like Jesus was sent for us and we really get to receive that during this time of year. And so uh, one, of the, one of the things that the Lord has shown me in my life is that whenever... Uh, Whenever we give, we actually open ourselves up to receive. Through that act of giving, our hearts are opened, and, and we're able to better receive what Christ has for us. And so in the spirit of giving, we're going to have the offering, so I'm going to call the ushers down uh, real quick, and I'm going to ask you all to please bow your heads in prayer as I pray. So Jesus, um, right now we just open just our hearts, God, and we thank you. Uh, for what this season means, God, and just that your son came on earth for us to, to die on the cross for us. And so right now we open our hearts, God, and we just receive what you have for us. We say, Holy Spirit, please come be with us, be in this service, be moving. And so we ask that you would bless our tithes, bless our offerings, and bless what we give you, and help us to be open to what you want to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Now lay the word you sin and error pine. Did he appear? So that is worth a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new. Shall we bring 
For the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall speak. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise, let our wings us praise his holy name. can remain sitting. Um, the scripture reading that we're going to be reading today is going to be John 1, 1 through 14, which says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and brought His life, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light, so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself, <laughs> sorry, I'm losing my face. Um, John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone who is coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believe him, believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth, resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward, if you will, come up to the stage. We've got a special message just for you. So if, if you're a kid, if you're a toddler, if you're a baby, you can bring your mom with you if you'd like. But come on up front. Can y'all hear me? We can. Okay. Well, it's wonderful to see you kids here tonight. And if you don't know me, my name is Miss April, and I'm the children's minister here at St. James. I'm so glad to have you with us tonight, and I've got a special message to share with you. 
a little bit about Christmas. I want to, is everybody excited about Christmas? Yes. yes, I am too. I'm so excited and I'm so glad you're here. We've been excited at St. James for a while. And in fact, last week we were celebrating Christmas with a cantata, which is telling the story of Christmas to music. Now, some of you were here for that and some of you weren't. So you don't know that our St. James kids sang the opening number in the cantata, Away in a Manger. Who knows the song, Away in a Manger? Does everyone know that song? Maybe? Okay, well, if you don't know it, you should listen to it when you get home because it's beautiful. You passed a manger when you were walking up here to the stage. A manger is simply a feeding trough, sort of like a food bowl for your dog or cat at home. But back in Bible times, that's where they would put hay and straw for the animals to eat, right? And we know that when Jesus was born, Mary had to place him in a manger to sleep because he didn't have a bed and he didn't have a place uh, for him to be... Um, put when he was born, right? And I want to think about a way in a manger a little differently for a moment, okay? So a way is just another way of saying a path or a route. For example, um, what is a way to get from the sanctuary to the playground outside? Does anybody have an idea? We can walk, certainly. What would be a way? We could, we could walk out those front doors right there, couldn't we? That's right. Did you hear him? He said we could walk out this door on the side and go down the stairs and out the door to the playground. That's right. That's another way. Another way we could go is out this door and down the steps, right? So you see there's several different ways we can go that will take us to the same destination. And that's cool. But God wants us to remember something tonight. Okay? It's a little bit different when we follow Jesus, okay? Because there's not many ways to get to heaven, okay? And there's not many ways to get to God. There's only one way, and that's the way. The way to God is Jesus, because Jesus is God. Okay, Jesus even tells us that in his word in John 14, 6. Jesus himself says to us in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so kids, I'm praying that tomorrow when you're with your families, opening presents and eating good food and laughing and having fun, I pray that you all have the most wonderful, joyous Christmas imaginable. And I hope that you'll take a moment to stop and pray and thank Jesus for being our Savior, for coming to earth to rescue us, and for being the way in a manger. Okay? Now, I thank y'all for coming here, and I've got a little prize in this bag. So on your way back to your parents, grab a treat, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the service. God bless you, and thanks for coming tonight. Yay. Yes, and if you have a sibling that didn't get to come up, please take a bag for them as well, okay? Yeah, we want everyone to get a treat. You get your baby. This manger for your bed You have a long road before you rest your little head Can you feel the weight of your glory? Do you understand? Does the Father 
regard your heart for now so you can sleep tonight go to sleep my son go and chase your dreams this world can wait for one more moment go and sleep in peace and I believe the glory of heaven is lying in my arms tonight Lord I ask that he for just this moment simply be my child the scripture from Isaiah 9 verses 2 through 7 from the NIV the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as men rejoice when dividing the plunder for as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Will you join me in prayer? Happy birthday, Jesus. Amen. We adore you. We worship you. We thank you for the gift of Christmas, that each year we have an opportunity, Lord, to remember, to reflect, to receive again the most unimaginably beautiful gift we could ever receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming. Thank you for stepping out of heaven, for leaving your Father on our behalf to rescue us and save us. Lord, I thank you for every man and woman and child that's here tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you have drawn them here. And I pray that each one will encounter your love, your forgiveness, and your mercy and your presence, your goodness and your holiness. 
that they will come to know you anew or perhaps for the first time so that you would be born again this night, Lord, in our hearts and in our lives. We thank you for the gift of Christmas. Lord, I lift up Pastor Bill to you now. I thank you for the message that you've laid upon his heart, that he is prepared. Holy Spirit, empower his words to reach the places they need to go. And I pray that we will be prepared as well to receive. Lord, bless this congregation and this night and all that we do is for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, April. We appreciate that. Okay. As I uh, move into this little devotion that I uh, really felt led by the Lord to, uh, to share with you tonight, I just got to tell you what a joy it is to have our friends from the light here this evening. Merry Christmas to you all. It is always a thrill uh, to be able to uh, be able to get together with you all in joint worship services or any kind of acts of service we might do together. We love you guys so much, and we're grateful to God for you. So thank you all for coming, and it's great to have some of them participating up here on the stage tonight. I know that really delighted Brian a lot, and uh, we'll see a few more of those singers um, following the message. I also want to say hello to Tim Savelle. Tim is a, uh, he was somebody who came out of the St. James Congregation uh, a few years ago, and he was led and called by God to pastor uh, a few churches up in Elberton, and so he is the pastor over one right now. And uh, Tim, it's great to have you here this evening. Tim is normally, of course, on Sundays. He's up in Elberton taking care of his tribe up there, but he has the time off this afternoon. So, Tim, it's always a delight. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you and to Pastor Craft. All right. What's that? Jay Case. Okay, where's Jake? Oh, there you are. Hey, Jake. I'm so glad. Hey, thank you. So Jake is another guy that was birthed out of St. James, and he is the pastor over at Walnut Grove, um, which is over near, it's kind of, basically it's kind of uh, west of here, let's put it that way, toward Atlanta. And so welcome, Jake. Great to have you. Merry Christmas, my friend. All right. Well, will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that at Christmas, you bring old friends together who, who may not see each other very often. But God, we, we give you praise because, Lord, you're the common thread that unites us all. Because there's a really good chance that had not any of us been saved, had you not come to earth for us, had you not started a family for yourself, that we might not know each other. We might not know a Jake Hayes, a Tim Savelle, or people of the light. Thank you, though, God, that we do, because these are our brothers and sisters who live forever with you, in you, and with us as well. So thank you, God, for the common thread that binds us together that will not ever be broken. We worship you, Jesus. Be honored in all that we say, do, or think, and open our Open our hearts to your very words of Scripture. In Christ it is done. Amen. So, if I were to ask you how many babies were born in Georgia last year, would you know the answer? Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm glad you're at least honest about it, you know, rather than trying to fake it to make it. Like, oh, yeah, I, I know that. And then I put you on the spot and I ask you, and you're like, oh, no, actually, I was just joking. Okay, so 42,000. In America, there were 3.6 million babies born last year in 2022. Worldwide, there were 134 million babies born. Now, of all the, all the children that have come into the world since the beginning of creation, the billions and billions and, and tens of billions of people, only one of them had the ability to change the trajectory of your eternity. Only one. And it's the same one that we worship tonight. Jesus and only Jesus. 
as April said, he is the way. They're not alternative plans. He's the only way sent from the Father's heart out of love for us, for you, for me. Now, not only has Jesus changed your eternity, but he also is going to change what everything's going to look like in the future, in the next life to come. Because over in Isaiah 65, the scripture tells us that God's going to create a brand new heaven. He's going to renovate what heaven looks like now. And he's going to put that new heaven on a brand new earth that, yes, he will, he will refresh. He will give a makeover to. And he's going to change altogether what life is going to be like on this planet. Do any of y'all look forward to that? Okay, I, I tell you, you know, you read the news for 15 minutes and you're just thinking like, oh, Jesus, this can't happen soon enough. Let, let it be, Lord, let it be. We're especially reminded of that with what we see with the hostage situation where these, these poor folks over in Israel are detained in, capt in captivity uh, down beneath ground. Now the scripture says every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the, for the fire. That means that God's going to change a world of violence into a world of peace. Now, you know that even if you're a casual glancer at the news, that on October the 7th, this terrorist organization, Hamas, they, they really swarmed into parts of Israel, and they took about 240 hostages. Since October the 7th, they've been holding them. Quite a few have been released, but still over 100 remain in captivity. Now, when the hostages have been coming out, and for those that have been released, uh, let's just say, I'm not going to get really descriptive, we have children in the crowd tonight, but let's just say that they weren't exactly given the Ritz-Carlton treatment. They, they didn't have the, the, the greatest hospitality extended to them while they were, um, while they were there captured. So the sad part about all this to me, one of the saddest parts, is that back in 2006, the people of Palestine, who Jesus loves, they elected Hamas to become their government. Now, I'm sure they were given all kinds of promises, but they see now that those promises that were extended to them were very, very empty. They have not made, Hamas has not made the Palestinians' life easier, but rather harder, right? Um, but to give the Palestinians the peace that, that they crave and that we pray they get one day, and for the peace that Israel longs for, they really don't need a two-state solution. They need heaven's solution. You know, and, and so they need a better government. And the better government that that they need, that we need in this world, doesn't come from a ballot box. It comes from a Savior, as April said, that was placed in a food bowl, in a manger. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government, the government of the world is going to be on his shoulders. Friends, no stronger pair of shoulders has ever been born on this earth than his. Of the greatness of his government. You know, here in America, we know that presidents can be elected at a max of, for a two-year term. That means eight years, and then they're done, right? They, they can't get any more. And then they lose their, their title as the acting president. I'm glad that Jesus is never going to lose his title. All right? Lord, Messiah, Savior. He, he's never going to forfeit it. He's never going to vacate it. And you know, when Jesus grabs control of the world's government in the next life to come, we see him doing that now by changing hearts, person by person. But in the next life, it's going to be obvious who's sitting on the throne. 
And, and when he assumes control of the world's government, guess what? There'll be no more great recessions or depressions. There'll be no more skyrocketing inflation. You know, there will, there will never be an economic crash. Hey, and by the way, unlike politicians that we see today, he won't lie. Now, isn't that kind of a refreshing thought? Think about it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the kind of leader that we need, right? The greatness of his peace, there will be no end. Think about it. No more road rage. What a day that will be. Terrorists capturing innocent civilians. That life will be forever gone. And everybody in the new heaven on the new earth, this is a remarkable fault, will get along together with peaceful joy. Yeah, now, now that will be something. And the catalyst for all of that was God coming to earth and being born as a baby. But friends, somebody on the altar committee was asking me whenever this, um, this manger was built up front here in front of the altar, they said, well, Bill, do you, want a, do you want a baby in there representing Jesus? And I thought, I was like, nope, the manger is empty. See, he left the manger so that he could go and rule on his throne. Because that's where he belongs. And he's never getting off. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God's kids said, Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, friends. <clears throat> the scripture said from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. You know, one of the things I've noticed about God, I've learned about him through the years, is that God is not a do-nothing God. When he, sees, when he sees problems persist on earth, it's not okay with him just to leave it like it is. He's always going to bring heaven's, heaven's solutions to earth's problems when we back them up with prayer. So where there is violence, Jesus brings peace. Where there is hatred, God brings love. Where there is darkness all around, God brings the light of his presence. So I want to ask for our, um, our candle lighters to please come forward. I've got a team coming forward, and what we're going to do is um, in fact, I would ask Stan if you could, or maybe Al at the bottom, I think you control the lights up in the balcony. If you could turn the lights off, Al, in the balcony. Thank you. We're going to dim all the lights here, and, and then we're going to be lighting the candles. But let me tell you something. This is, these are very important instructions, okay? Because I don't want the person sitting next to you to get really angry at you tonight. So here's how to prevent that. What our candle lighters are going to do is we're going to have a couple of them go up top. We're going to have a couple of them stay down here. They're going to be, the ones that are down here, they're going to be stay, sticking to the middle aisle. So for, the user, for those of you who are sitting uh, right close to the middle aisle, um, one of the candle lighters is going to come by and they're going to light your candle. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to hold out your, your unlit candle to their lit candle, okay, and then you're going to need to light it. When you do, you're going to need to take, once your candle's lit, you're going to need to leave, leave it vertical. And the person sitting next to you is they're going to light um, their candle off of your candle coming in like this. You got it? The reason you don't do it the other way is because if you take a lit candle and you're going sideways to the unlit candle, guess what? You're going to get candle wax on their dress, or on their skin, you're going to make them really, really uh, angry. We don't want that. So um, anyway, when you get your candle lit, leave it like that, okay? All right. Okay, y'all. Okay, excellent. 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 Let's get that.
that bread. Yeah. 
God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Thanks Merry for coming. Christmas.